tutorial video, we're going to go over an effect that I like to call environment blending. And before we jump into just editing shader nodes, I have a little bit of explaining to do to help you understand why we want to do this. Let's say your environment artist comes to you and he says, I'm really tired of making rocks. We have a desert level, we have a snow level, we have a wet level, we have all these different, oh, we have a jungle level, and I have to make rocks that have snow on them, I have to make rocks that have sand on them, I have to make rocks that have moss on them, I'm getting tired of making rocks. Can you create a shader that would make it easy for me to take my existing set of rocks and apply snow or moss or sand or whatever the material is so I don't have to make a new set of rocks for every single environment? Yeah, we can do that. In the old days, it used to be that when you'd create all these different environments, you'd have to make one set of textures for your mossy rocks and another set of textures for your snowy rocks and another set of textures for your sandy rocks and you would have all these different rock assets that you had to keep track of. Well now what we can do is we can create a single set of rock assets and then change out what kinds of materials are applied depending on the environment that they're in. So that's what we're going to do in this example. So we'll jump right in here and you can see that I've got my test sphere with the nice rock uh, base color and normal map. So the, the sphere doesn't exactly look like a rock because it's perfectly round, but, uh, but we do have rock color and normal applied to it. And so the first thing that we have to figure out is if I wanna make this into a mossy rock, how do I blend moss color and normal with the color and normal that I've already got here. Well, uh, I thought ahead a little bit and I went ahead and I brought in my moss and my normal map for the moss here. And what we need to do is blend these two together. And the way that you blend things is with a node called a lerp. And a lerp is short for linear interpolation. So I'm gonna type linear and there it is linear interpolate and so here I have a node with an A, a B, and an alpha and so what this means is I can plug one texture into A, a second texture into B and then something into alpha to blend the two of them together so let's go ahead and do that I'm gonna move my normal map out of the way here for a second I'm going to plug my rock texture into A and my moss texture into B and then I'm going to plug my output into my base color and let's see what happens. Alright so what did I get? I got moss and I got rock and it looks like they're kind of faded together. Well the way that they're blended depends on this alpha value so let's look down here in our properties and it says our alpha value defaults to 0 0.5. Well, let's see what happens if we set this to 0. So if we set it to 0, we get just our rock. And if we set it to 1, we get just our moss. And if we set it to 0 0.5, we get a perfectly blended moss and rock combination. Now this doesn't really exist in reality because moss is not transparent. So this isn't exactly what we want. We want some way of saying moss is in this location and rock is in this other location. We're going to get to that in a second, but the first thing that I want to do before we do that is blend our normals in the same way. So I'm going to take our base rock normal and our moss normal and I'm going to add another linear interpolate node here and I'm going to wire my rock normal into A and my moss normal into B and then I'm going to wire the result of that into the normal on my root node and I'm going to get so I've now blended 50-50 of moss color and rock color and moss normal and rock normal 
So this is sort of what I want, but not really. What I really want to do is create a mask to apply the moss only on the top. And th in order to do that, I need to find the top. And so I need a normal. So let's right click here and I'm going to type vertex normal and I find that I have this thing called vertex normal world space. So let's see what that does. Um, this is the direction that the vertices are facing in world space. Let's grab a component mask node and this will allow me to access individual components of my normal because a normal has an X and a Y and a Z. So if I want the up facing component, um, in some game engines they're Y up and some engines they're Z up and I happen to know that Unreal is Z up which is a little bit odd but that's okay. So we're gonna take Y of my vertex normal and when it's facing straight up my vertex normals uh, Z component is going to be zero or is going to be one and when it's straight down it's going to be negative one. So if I wire this into my alpha let's do that really quick and just see what happens. Alright so there's some weird stuff going on here but you can sort of see I've got moss on the top and then coming down here to the bottom I've got this weird blue why am I getting blue on the bottom of my rock? Well, as it turns out, like I said, the value goes from 1 to negative 1. And so my lerp is, is blending between the rock and the moss from 0. So when my alpha is 0, it's showing the rock. And when it's 1, it's showing the rock, the moss. But when it's negative one, it's actually going in the opposite direction and pushing past my rock to something that's further away from my rock than the moss. So if I actually wanted to do this, I need to put down another value called clamp, or another node rather that's called clamp. And I wanna clamp between zero and one. So I'm gonna pass that into here and I'm gonna clamp my alpha value here and I'm going to clamp my alpha value here. Okay, so now I have my world space normal, the Z component of that, and I'm throwing away everything that's negative. So my my world space Z goes from 1 to negative 1 and then I'm clamping it so that it just goes from 1 to 0 and then it stops and all the rest of it is 0. And you can see that sort of worked as well. So I've got moss on the top of my rock and I've got nothing down here on the bottom. So what I really want to do is increase the contrast of, of my mask so that instead of this transparent looking moss, moss, I actually get sort of a hard line where the moss is applied. So I'm going to move my clamp node here because I want to work right here in between my mask and my clamp to add some contrast. To, to add some contrast I'm gonna put in a node called power. And what this does is it takes whatever value is here and it raises it to a power. It's basically multiplying it by itself over and over and over again. And this is really convenient for increasing contrast. So I'm gonna wire that into my clamp you can see here the value by default is set to 2. I'm going to set this to a really high value, something like 30. Let's just see what happens. All right, so it seems like my moss disappeared. Let's rotate around here to the top of the sphere and see if I can see any moss at all. Oh yeah, see, there's some, some moss here at the top, but there's so much contrast happening right now that uh, it's forced the mask toward the top of the, the sphere. So that we can get a better idea of what's going on, instead of showing color for a minute, I'm gonna wire my clamp right into my base color. So it's just gonna be showing the mask. 
What I'm trying to create here is a mask that I can use to blend between my rock and my moss. And this is going to take me a minute. And so what I want to be able to do is just see what's happening with my mask. Uh, and then once I get the mask where I want it, I can plug I can plug it back into uh, the color. So let's raise this to an even higher power. Let's go like uh, let's go up to 100 and see what that looks like. The higher my power goes, the sharper the edge of the mask is going to get, but it's also going to pull it more up toward the top. And I can actually fight that a little bit if I come in here and I do an add. So I'm going to add a value. And let's just add a value of, oh, so, <laughs> By default, it added a value of one, and that made the moss go, or that made the mask go right to the center. So this is kind of, maybe this is what I want. Maybe I just want to add a value of one. So I'm going to come in here and add a constant value. Instead of just, instead of keeping my value here on the properties of the add, I'm going to expose it this way with a constant so it's a little more obvious what's happening and I'm gonna add a value of one. And you can see now that my mask goes from uh, from one to one here, right at the equator of my sphere. And then it falls off quickly, right to black at the bottom. So if I have this plugged in to blend my rock and my moss, let's take a look and see what that looks like. All right, so I've got moss on the top and, and uh, rock on the bottom. Well, this is kind of what I want, but that line there is, it's just not doing it for me. It's really hard. So what I want to do instead is I want to use the normal of my rock itself. Instead of using my world space uh, vertex normal, I actually want to use the normal that I'm getting from this map. This map has a lot of really nice detail in it. And if I use this map to create my mask, I may be able to get uh, some better breakup here of this line. So first I'm going to wire my mask back into my base color so that I can see what's going on. And now I want to be able to use this vertex normal. However, there is something that I need to explain really quickly, and that's uh, the difference between tangent space and world space. Right now, this vertex normal is in world space. That's why it says WS right here. And so the up direction of the vertex normal is going to be up in world. But this texture map here, this, this normal map, is in tangent space, which means the up direction is pointing the, away from the surface. And the, the other two... Um, the other two vectors of the tangent basis are pointed along the surface in the u and the v deck, uh, in the u and the v direction of the uv coordinates. So, in order to use this for my mask, the first thing that I need to do is convert it from tangent space into world space. And in order to do that, I need to add a node called a transform vector. There's my transform vector node. So I want to transform from tangent space to world space. And you can see there's a bunch of other options for different spaces to transform to. So I'm going to take the RGB coming out of my normal map and connect that to the tangent space side of my transform vector. And now that I've got my normal map in world space, I can come up here and connect it instead of my vertex normal, now I'm using my pixel normal or my normal map. Wow, you can see that that's getting me like almost exactly what I want. You can see, <laughs> and because I've got my mask here, it's it's uh, it's looking like snow, obviously. Um, but basically, this is white where the moss is going to be and black where the rock is going to be. So I transformed my normal into world space. And then I took the Z component because Unreal is Z up. And then I added one to it. If I change this add value here, like let's just change this to 0.5 now. 
And you can see that I'll get less moss, like the moss will only be like uh, on the top part where it's not as steep. But the higher that I make this value, the more the moss will creep down the sides. And the lower that I make this value, the more the moss will just be applied where the rock is pointing straight up. And then my, my power node here, like I said, the higher I take this power, the sharper the edges are going to be between the moss and the rock where it's blended together. Okay, so let's take my rock and my moss and plug that into my base color now and see what happens. All right, cool. So now I've got a shader that applies the moss to the top and it blends really nicely with the rock. And the really nice thing about this is because I'm transforming to world space here, I could take my rock and turn it any random direction and the moss would still be applied to the top. And the nice thing about that is I can just make a couple of rocks. And then if I rotate them randomly, they start looking like a lot more rocks are there than there actually are. And so I can get a lot of mileage out of just a couple of rocks and my moss will then be applied to the top. But even better, if I take these same rocks into another environment, like the snow environment or the desert environment that I was talking about before, I can just do one texture swap here, and instead of moss, I can apply snow. Or I can apply sand. And now I've got a whole new set of rocks without having to make anything. And so this is just a great way of saving your environment artist time. Uh, because they can make just a couple of rocks, randomly rotate them, and apply them to all different kinds of areas. Now there's nothing new about this technique. Um, I think the first time I really uh, saw it used was in Skyrim back in 2011. So this is this is fairly a fairly old technique, but it's something that we use a lot when we want to apply materials and help save the environment artists some time. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, if you want more videos like this, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll know when new, vi new videos are available. And I'll catch you in the next video.